Alright guys, today we're talking about the skill-based matchmaking. I think it's been the most highly requested comment that I've gotten over the last two to three weeks, especially since Season 5 launched. And yes, I've spoken about it before, and yes, I've gone into it in great detail. But you guys have said, Romy, it has gotten worse. What is going on with Halo Infinite? We're getting unwinnable games, we can't play with our friends, please will you talk about it, bring some awareness to it, you're our only hope. So I spent the whole day researching the skill-based matchmaking inside and out, so don't say I don't listen to you guys, let's get to it. Here's what's going on. So with Halo Infinite Season 5, people have become very aware of the skill-based matchmaking. And I'm going to explain today why it is so flawed. If you expect me to just say the skill-based matchmaking sucks, it does, but probably not for the reason you're expecting. I really believe the beginner level players shouldn't be absolutely destroyed, and there should be some element of team balancing to make sure they have a good time as well. But when there is adequate population, there is no reason a player who has performed very well in his last few games should be punished in the games that follow. Have you ever played games on Halo Infinite and done very well? Just to find out the next game, you get absolutely destroyed. It inflates your skill-based matchmaking hidden rank and expects you to play at that exact same skill level the next game. This is unrealistic for a number of reasons. One, you don't play as good as your best game every single game. That's just unrealistic. Two, the weapons on the map might be different game to game. If you've just done really well with a rocket launcher and a sniper rifle, the game's going to expect you to do that again. But those weapons aren't on the map, so it's impossible. Even if there's a sniper rifle on the map, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to get the skewer, which is not a sniper rifle, and you're not going to be able to carry to the extent you did in that previous game. That is a huge reason as to why the current skill-based matchmaking is really, really flawed. Another really bad reason of it is that the better you are, the more time you spend learning the game, the lower your win rate becomes. A gold level player, the average level player, has a higher win rate than a professional level player. And I just think that's crazy. It seems like the game actively punishes you for being better at it. And this is evident from unwinnable games, unfair teams, long search times to actually find the games themselves, and in some instances, locked out of playlists completely. Now, I haven't even gone into detail, but you can't play with your friends as your skill-based rating is too high. And for everybody, not just the good players, the skill-based matchmaking will expect you to play in the most efficient way possible to the best of your ability, as that's how it's going to balance the team. So the skill-based matchmaking itself is competitive, which in turn makes the games competitive. And that's why you guys can't relax, that's why you can't have fun and just mess around, because of the way the system is designed. Now what can 343 do to fix this? And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, variation, variety. Halo 3 had a system, some games were sweaty, some games were casual, and then there was a heap in between. The best of both worlds and evidence shows a system like this provided the best matchmaking retention rates for an online video game. Now the two systems, the one we have now and the one I've just described, it really depends on the company and the mentality and philosophy of the people in charge of the system. ex Bungie devs, mainly Max Hoberman, believed in variety, whereas Joshua Menk, he created the current system, believed in the strictness of the skill-based matchmaking. I believe Halo is a very social game, and at the moment, and from the last few years, Halo hasn't been as social as it was, say, 10 to 15 years ago. That is an issue. I could do a whole separate video about the social features, as I've spoken about before, but I'm not going to get into that today. But competitive-based matchmaking is fine for ranked. It's even fine to have team balancing and loose skill-based matchmaking for social-based modes. What players don't want is to feel like they're playing a second job when they're getting on to play Halo. I tried to play with my girlfriend's son the other day, and he got no kills because the skill-based matchmaking was so strict, and then on top of that, it banned him for not getting any kills, which is a completely different can of worms, but all round, it sucks. So there you have it guys, short, sharp, to the point, Halo Infinite skill-based matchmaking, in my eyes, has a lot of room for improvement, and I really hope 343 takes my advice on board. Even if they don't implement everything I've suggested, I really think for the big team social modes, big team battle, squad battle, it should have minimal to no skill-based matchmaking. If you aren't aware, squad battle actually has very strict skill-based matchmaking now. 343 made the change. It's never advertised anywhere, but I can never play with my viewers on stream now. I can only play with one person and never a group. So I'd love Halo to be more social. I'd love some changes to the skill-based matchmaking. If you guys agree, Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.